we were very good at looking for invasions. But interesting is that even as much as Mukuru has become one of the most dense communities in Nairobi today, is, is that I think around 2003, Mukuru was, had huge spaces of, you know, like open space. But then at one point, um, we heard that invasions were happening and we wanted to record how an invasion happens and how, how people construct and how they, you know, they start, how do they even agree on who is where and who is where. So, so Jack and I and, uh, and our colleague Chep, we, we went with cameras and we were going to record. We had a contact person and the contact person was already on the ground. Chep was driving us, so she, she remained in the car. To go to the place where the invasions were happening, we needed to cross, to, to pass through an existing settlement. So we went and our contact person was already in the area where the invasions were happening. So we kept communicating on the phone and he kept saying, yeah, you come, you come. So we kept going in deep and going, going, going. And then at one point, we, we were looking for him. We were, we were talking, yes, on phone, but we're still not getting him. So, but then eventually we got him and he began showing us around and everything. I don't remember what happened, but what got around that there were two people in the settlement that were recording or that were taking information, getting information about what was going on. And, and because some people knew us, some people didn't. So what this guy did is that he organized for us to get protection. Because at some point I think there was some bit of commotion that people running and coming to find out who are these people. So in the guy's wisdom, he told us, we need to, you, you guys need to go, you need to cover, so you need to leave the settlement. But it was not practical to leave the settlement physically completely because you know leaving it would still encounter the people that are coming to coming for us. So so what we did is um, there was just a way that communities are very good with making someone disappear. I mean like enabling someone to escape. I remember being uh, pushed into a, uh, one of the houses. And in, in, that, in that house, there were, there were these ladies, they were, I think, just talking. And I remember just being pushed in and being pushed under the, the, the bed of the, the bed that the ladies were sitting on. So I went under the bed and their stories continued as if nothing is happening. So I'm, 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 I'm just there, and then Jack, of course, after we recalled the story uh, later, he also had a similar experience. <laughs> he had also been whisked under a, a bed. And so the idea was to, to stay there until the settlement has calmed down and everything is quiet, then we can go. So at that time, I think also the, the driver was also informed that she needs to also leave and take the car or go park the car somewhere that was safe. So we, we stayed there, we stayed put. From where I was, the ladies continued talking as if nothing has happened. And they went on and on. At some point, I actually thought they had forgotten. But then later after it had come, then we were consolidated. The, the guy who had been communicating with us came, got me, got Jack at some point. We went, consolidated in the, in the car and went. But it's interesting when I think about it that how we have been part of the evolution of settlements. We've actually been part of the evolution of settlements because there's a time that communities invaded or came to these spaces and built and construct these spaces as we were seeing. And then now they've gotten to a place where there's no more space available in the city. So there's a time when there was some bit of abundance of space, but now there's no longer abundance of space. You go to the same place that we were then, now, completely different, completely commercialized, completely owned, 